congregation of Westbrook Community United Church Christ seek to affirm the person that you are with loving hearts and open minds. Guided by the Holy Spirit, we are committed to expanding the ever-widening circle of Christ's love. We embrace the diversity of God's own image, which includes people of all ages, races, ethnicities, physical and mental abilities, gender identities, and sexual orientation. We also respect the diversity in our political beliefs, theological backgrounds, socioeconomic and relationship statuses. We welcome all. Anyway, way the world describes you, or you describe yourself, you are welcome here to join and participate in experiencing our still speaking God. Good morning. This is the day the Spirit will move. We will rejoice and be glad in it. Welcome to Pentecost Sunday here at Westerville Community United Church of Christ. I am so glad you've chosen to spend your Sunday morning, this beautiful Sunday morning with us. I am Pastor Susan, joined by Pastor Zigrid, and I believe Nevin Longgardner is our lay reader on this day. There you are, Nevin, good to see you. And um, we're glad that you're here. Whether you are joining us here in our sanctuary or from the sacred space of your home or hotel room or hospital room, wherever you find yourself on this day, I pray that you feel the spirit joining you there and joining you together with us as well. For those of you here in our sanctuary, I invite you to take a moment and find the friendship pad located at the end of each row. If you could take a moment to sign it, let us know that you're here and send it down the row so others might sign in as well. When it gets to the end of the row, it's really helpful if that last person takes it and sends it back to the beginning so others can open it and read your name and greet you at some point during the service or after today. If you're joining us online, I invite you to drop your name in the comments. And of course, there's an opportunity for you to share any joys or concerns so uh, those of us here in the congregation can be praying for you throughout the week. If you are a guest here today, I offer you a very special greeting. If this is your first time or your second time or your 15th time as a guest in our congregation, I hope you feel a deep sense of belonging for this congregation is a place that welcomes all. Uh, I'd also like you to know that our nursery is open for children who are three years old and younger. The nursery can be found, it's actually just opposite that wall. So if you walk through that hallway, you'll find it. And sometimes kids don't necessarily want to hang out in the nursery, but they're also not comfortable being in the sanctuary. If that's the case for your family, in that hallway, you will have direct access to this service through speakers and obviously visually through the windows. But children are always welcome in this space. We do offer Joyful Noise Kids Worship today, and that will take place immediately following our children's sermon. We will be using our new century hymnal today. That is the black hymnal located under several of your chairs, and all of the lyrics and text for the service will also appear on the screen. Today is Communion Sunday. Now, we are prayerfully, hopefully, finally at a place in the pandemic where we think we can start to do things like we used to do to some degree. So we'll give you more specific directions later, but we are inviting you to come forward for communion. It is not traditional intention. No one will be dipping anything into a common cup. You will have an opportunity to take uh, an individual piece of bread and an individual cup of communion juice and come forward. Our ushers will be dismissing you row by row to come forward. If you're more comfortable staying in your seat, we'll be bringing communion to you there as well. Our Parish Life Board is very busy. They want you to mark your calendars for June 22nd at 4 p.m. to join them in making your very own fairy garden planter at Hoover Gardens. All of the information for that and our other events in this church are available in our online uh, communications and also in the Narthex, which is the lobby area of this church. Our Vacation Bible Adventure is taking place in just a week's time. It begins on June 12th. Through the six, and it goes through the 16th. Our theme this year is Food Truck Party. We are looking for more kids to sign up. Kids, if you're interested, it will be so much fun and bring your friends. And the big news of this week, the rummage sale has finally arrived. And this takes a village. The rummage sale every year helps us raise funds for really important, significant mission projects locally and afar. So we need volunteers to help set up, run the sale, work the cafe, and clean up. You can drop your donations off throughout the week. 
If you want to know when to drop them off, are you ready? I'm gonna list all the times. Take out your phones, write this down. I would say get out a pen, but none of you carry a pen anymore. You can bring your items today to the church between 1 and 3 p.m. and again between 6 and 8 p.m. Monday through Wednesday, volunteers will be here to collect your donations between 9 and 11 p.m. I'm sorry, that's really late night. 9 and 11 a.m., 1 to 3 p.m., and again in the evenings from 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, the congregational preview, it is the place to see and be seen. Be here on Thursday night from 6 to 8 p.m. You get a first uh, peek at all of the goodies and decide what you'd like to bring home and call yours. And today, immediately following the service, if you could all be so kind as to help us move just a few chairs each from this sanctuary, that will help things move so much more quickly during the week. Thank you. And in just a moment, we will prepare for worship through the music of the prelude. And while we all love Stu and your music, it always stirs us to either applaud or to move into a deeper sense of worship. So at the end of the prelude, we'll take a beat or two in prayerful silence. And then we'll move directly into our opening hymn, which is Spirit of Gentleness. You can find that in the black hymnal number 286. The words will also be on the screen. Let us now open ourselves to what God will do in our hearts and in this place as we prepare for worship through the prelude.
Good morning. Please join me in the call to worship. We celebrate Pentecost as we remember that the Holy Spirit is gentle yet powerful. The Holy Spirit is present and unites us as the Church of Jesus Christ. Let us worship our living God, who was, who is, and will be among us. Please join me in prayer. God, we pray that you guide us whenever we see barriers and boundaries. Inspire us to look beyond our human made limitations. Transfer us to be your people, seeking peace and justice. Let this worship service refresh and empower us to be your people in the world. Amen. Our response hymn is number 283, Spirit of the Living God. Good morning, everyone, from me as well, and a hot welcome. And yes, Mary, it is time for a children's sermon. Anybody wants to join Mary with energy and with Holy Spirit, filled and fresh and... Wow, come on up for a children's sermon. Wow, hello. Oh, you lost something. You lost a little elephant. Good morning, everyone. How are you? Who has summer? Who has summer vacation already? Who has no more school? Yeah, yeah. Summer is finally here. Finally here. Today we are celebrating something which is called Pentecost. It's a huge, long word. We are celebrating that the Holy Spirit is amongst us. And you wonder, what is that? We all know about God, God the Creator. We know about Jesus. Jesus loves us. But what is the Holy Spirit? You know? I forgot. You forgot. I hope you remember. Because if you look right over here, where some of our beautiful flowers are, we have a beautiful, beautiful bouquet of red ribbons. Yep, you're just a second. And if you see, are they waving? Like a big, ooh. However, if I take one of these beautiful, doesn't matter which one I take. Oh. If I just hold them like that, they're pretty flat. But if I wave them, look at that. And if I wave even two of them, or if I wave even just a ribbon, I can make all kinds of beautiful, artistic, wonderful creations. Because the wind, the wind moves them perfectly around. And the color red, it's like fire. And if you look around, you see a lot of red. 
It's like the fire inside us. Because the Holy Spirit is in us and just moves us, just like the wind. And even with my hands, I can get the moving and the wind going. And this is what we celebrate today. Just a second. And so, if you would like one, you may take either one with a stick or just a beautiful ribbon afterwards. And maybe, <clears throat> um, Mr. Jeffrey can take them to um, Joyful Noise, and afterwards, you may get one. And you can put those beautiful ones around your wrist, or maybe on your bike, or maybe you have a scooter. You can put them in your hair, and the faster you run, the ribbon runs with you. And the Holy Spirit is not standing still, but moves wherever we are. Because it's a sign of God in us. And through us, we are going and moving. And God is in us. So, you have a question? Well, Rick, I know it's the Holy Spirit in, but I forget what it does. Well, that's what it does. It moves us all over the place. And it's not standing still. Another question you have? How does the Holy Spirit it's God in you. Wow, that's a very good question. So, Jeffrey, be prepared for <laughs> joyful life, okay? Be prepared for all these very deep Holy Spirit questions. Let us pray. Gracious God, thank you so much for the curiosity. And we are so excited that you move in us and through us and with us and that everyone has a piece of God in us and that we, through you, can move the world because you are just like the wind, moving us and never standing still. We pray all this, especially for the question of these beautiful children. In Christ's name, amen. And yes, today, you will have the opportunity to go to Joyful Noise. Mr. Jeffrey is right over there, so if you wouldn't mind afterwards. I hope you may. <laughs> And you are all welcome to, if you want to, to go to Joyful Noise. And we'll be back. I need something. Okay. And you will be back for communion. I love their deep questions. How does the Holy Spirit move us? Well, the Holy Spirit moves you to be much more nimble than the rest of us, kiddos. We come now to a sacred time in our worship where we turn to God with the many people and situations that we hold close at heart today. I do have a few congregational prayers to lift up. Alan Johnston has been moved to a rehabilitation facility where he continues after some procedures at St. Anne's. He and his wife, Rebecca, are very grateful for our continued prayers. Debbie Rowland is preparing to learn what the next steps will be on her path toward good health as she has a, a doctor's appointment tomorrow. Please continue to hold Debbie and the entire family in prayer during this time. Jim Schaefer is home from the hospital and we are very glad for that. My understanding is he's home and recuperating and he and Karen, thank you all for your prayers and um, let's continue to hold them close at heart. We are also lifting up Raleigh Boone, the father of Betsy Nguyen. Uh, who has had some difficult health challenges lately. Please continue to pray for him and let us hope that God will bring healing to his body and his spirit. Uh, we do have some good news to lift up on this day. There is a birth in this congregation. Jenna Kim, formerly known as Jenna Skogland, and her husband James Kim welcomed their first child, a son named Charles, just after midnight. So technically today is Charles's birthday. I saw a picture and he is precious and they must be exhausted. It was a couple of days of labor. So we are so excited that Charles is here. Mom and baby are both doing well. We give thanks along with grandparents, Karen and Ryan Skoglund, and of course, proud aunt Jessica Skoglund. More good news, Carl Juckett and Ann Newmoff Juckett were married in Michigan last Thursday. So let us celebrate that good news. I understand they'll be having a ceremony here sometime in the fall. 
We also continue to hold the Summers family in prayer. Our hope is that Sammy, who was home for a while and then returned to the hospital, will be going home sometime this week. Let us go to God in prayer. We turn to you on this day of Pentecost celebration, divine love, and proclaim, come Holy Spirit, come. Descend upon us and bring healing love from heaven. Touch the bodies, souls, and minds of those who cry out to you. We pray for Alan and Rebecca Johnston, Debbie Rowland, Jim Schaefer, Sammy and May Summers, and Raleigh Boone, father of Betsy Nguyen. Come, Holy Spirit, come. Grant each of these families full hearts and the strength of the wind to move through their trials. We give you thanks for the new life of baby Charles and ask you to be at work in him every day. Bless Jenna, James, and the entire Kim and Scogland family. And bless Carl and Anne in their new married life. We give you thanks for these joys. And for a world that otherwise feels broken and filled with grief, we call out, come Holy Spirit, come. Break through the clouds and descend with peace of a dove. May rulers of all the earth be so overcome by your power that they speak with tongues a fire with love, mercy, and righteousness. We pray that you'll open our hearts and our ears, that we'll begin to truly understand each other's languages. Make words of compassion fall upon our lips moving us to act with justice in the name of all that is good. For this church that will welcome guests through our doors as we raise funds to fuel our mission work, we cry, come Holy Spirit, come. Be at work in each of our volunteers, strengthening us with a spirit of serving others. With gratitude, we give you praise for those who have and who will live into our call to love our neighbors. Hear all of our prayers, Heavenly One, as we bring them to you in this moment of silence. We lift these prayers to you in the name of our risen Christ. We lift them in faith that your spirit has already descended and lives among us. Amen. Good morning. Um, so, the songs I want to share with you are ones that um, I, hold, I hold dear. I hold them tight as promises. And it's really nice to know that we can just come before God as who we are and just be and just sit with him in, in grace and mercy and goodness and love. And um, I was working on these songs um, before this, before this past week, and um, Debbie had asked me if I would play um, along with Stu, and um, and I'm like, oh my gosh, it's Pentecost Sunday. Oh, uh, I hope my songs are Pentecost songs. Ha! Ah! And I know it's a very thematic thing we do here, and I get it. And so I was like, oh my gosh. Well, let's just hope. So I was playing through this week, and I was moved, moved that. I think they really are Pentecost songs, and I've never looked at them that way. So um, I did not see that coming at all, and um, I think God is just super cool. So <laughs> the first song is based off of um, a verse in the book of Psalms, and it's Psalm 5-3. In the morning, O Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, I lay my requests before you, and I wait in expectation. 
And I'm going to segue to the next song, and it's based on um, some verses in Ephesians 3, and those will be read throughout. And um, just being known by God and loved by God and filled to the fullness of who he is. Um, so I just want to share with you and you know, be filled. In the morning, O oh Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, O oh Lord, you hear my voice. In the morning, O oh Lord, I lay my requests. In the morning, O oh Lord, I lay my requests at your feet. And I wait in expectation, I wait in expectation, I wait in expectation for you. And I pray that you, being rooted and established in love, may have power, together with all the Lord's holy people, to grasp how wide and long and high and deep is the love of Christ, and to know this love that surpasses knowledge, that you may be filled to the measure of all the fullness of God. as I am, I come to you as me. Yeah. 
just as I am, I come to you as me. you just as I am I'm to you Jolaine, thank you, that was wonderful. Our first reading today is from the Old Testament, uh, the book of Genesis, chapter 11, verses one to nine. This is the Tower of Babel. Now the whole earth had one language and the same words. And as they migrated from the east, they came from a, upon a plain in the land of Shinar and settled there. And they said to one another, come, let us make bricks and burn them thoroughly. And they had brick for stone and bitumen for mortar. Then they said, come, let us build ourselves a city and a tower with its top in the heavens and let us make a name for ourselves. Otherwise, we shall be scattered abroad upon the face of the whole earth. The Lord came down to see the city and the tower which mortals had built. And the Lord said, look, they are one people and they have all one language. And this is only the beginning of what they will do. Nothing that they propose to do will now be impossible for them. Come, let us go down and confuse their language there so that they will not understand one another's speech. So the Lord scattered them abroad from there over the face of all the earth, and they left off building the city. Therefore, it was called Babel, because there the Lord confused the language of all the earth. And from there, the Lord scattered them abroad over the face of the earth. Our New Testament lesson today is from the book of Acts, and it's the story of Pentecost. When the day of Pentecost had come, they were all together in one place, and suddenly from heaven there came a sound like the rush of a violent wind, and it filled the entire house where they were sitting. Divided tongues as of fire appeared among them, and a tongue rested on each of them. All of them were filled with the Holy Spirit and began to speak in other languages as the Spirit gave them ability. Now there were devout Jews from every nation under heaven living in Jerusalem, and at this sound the crowd gathered and was bewildered, because each one heard them speaking in the native language of each. Amazed and astonished, they asked, Are not all of those who are speaking Galileans? And how is it that we hear, each of us, in our own native language? Parthians, Medes, Elamites, and the residents of Mesopotamia, Judea, in Cappadocia, Pontius, and Asia, Phrygia, and Pamphylia, Egypt, and the parts of Libya belonging to Cyrene, and visitors from Rome, both Jews and proselytes, Cretans and Arabs. In our own language, we hear them speaking about God's deed to power. All were amazed and perplexed, saying to one another, what does this mean? But others sneered and said, they are filled with new wine. But Peter, standing with the eleven, raised his voice and addressed them. Men of Judea and all who live in Jerusalem, let, it, let this be known to you and listen to what I say. 
Indeed, these are not drunk, as you suppose, for it is only nine o'clock in the morning. May God add his blessing in, uh, to the reading and hearing of his holy word. <laughs> Okay, now, no, they were not drunk. <laughs> it's only 10.45 or 10.37 in the morning. Thank you so much, Nevin, for reading all these names. You get a star for that one on A+. And Jolene, where are you right now? Thank you. I knew I was going to cry, and I did. And I was so glad that Nevin came in green so that I had some time <laughs> uh, to gather myself. And what a great Pentecost message for all of us, so thank you. A few weeks ago, Anna, our daughter, and I went to the Netherlands to visit our son. Peter is a student at Fontes University of Applied Science in Eindhoven, and the semester still goes on till at least the middle of July. So what I love, not only about that visit, it was a great, great time with our nearly two adult children, or adult children, wherever you say adulthood starts, but also going through the different areas and listening to people speak. Here in the States, wherever you are, you see uh, number plates with the different states. O-H-I-N-K-Y, and you know which state the people are coming from. In Europe, the number plates indicate not states, but countries. B for Belgium, NL for the Netherlands, E for Spain, I for Italy, uh, H-U for Hungary, and U-A for Ukraine. I saw quite a few of cars from Ukraine, which made me really glad to see that at least these people escaped. And going to the streets and to the restaurants, sitting at a street cafe, I heard Italian over there. I think that's Spanish, or is that Portuguese? And French over here. Yeah, that was French. I know a little, just a little, little bit of French. I could understand that. And some German. I think that is Croatian. Arabic, Turkish, and all the restaurants from people from their countries. And you knew that the recipes were handed over from generation to generations from generations from their own home country. The text Nevin read was about languages. The Old Testament from the Hebrew Bible, a very famous text about the Tower of Babel. Everybody understood each other, one language. Everybody here speaks English. Everybody understands each other. Till pride kicks in. And then God says, uh-uh, I'm nipping this one in the bud right now. So, different languages, that might be the answer. In the New Testament, it seems like they're in total opposite because we hear of different languages being spoken and all the different names never had to pronounce where people are coming from. Every single Pentecost, we hear that same text about languages. But there's something more than just speaking different languages. And there's something more just about different cultures. Because you need to understand, even at the time when Jesus was living, people spoke different languages. The official language right there was Latin, most the Roman Empire, so Latin was the official language. And depending which area you lived in, most of them spoke Greek, because the New Testament is written in Greek. We know Jesus spoke Aramaic, because that's the culture of Galilee, where a lot of people speak Galilean over there. And in the temple, you probably speak Hebrew. So just like that, you have four languages. Wow, think about that. Just like that, you have four languages, and people just speak it as if there was nothing to it. And I love sometimes to go like Niagara Falls or Great Canyon, where there are tourist attractions from all over, and you hear people languages speaking from all, literally all over the world. You know that they understand the tourist guide in English. And you know that they can read English and that they can speak it and understand it. However, if you then follow people, 
they speak their own languages amongst their friends and their families because that's what you're more familiar with. So maybe similar to what happened in our story today. Imagine a huge festival, people from all over coming, and they're supposed to speak only English, but after a while, you hear Italian over there, maybe some Somali over there, maybe some Spanish over there, maybe some English over there, wherever, whatever language you pick. And of course, people are wondering, or drunk, I don't understand it. Because a lot of times when we don't understand what's going on, we think people are intoxicated. Because that's what we assume, because we don't understand what's going on. No, it's only 10.38 in the morning. People are not drunk. People are filled with the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit can move you, can move people, can move all of us into different directions. Because the Holy Spirit does not hold us back in the past like a piece of museum item. But the Holy Spirit asks us to be united as family, as friends, in God's name, and therefore to go out and spread. So while we were in Eindhoven, we had to take the bus from Peter's house to go downtown. Not a big deal, and I jumped on the bus, we knew how to check in, we knew how to check out, like pros. Just before downtown, I noticed a church. There are many churches, but this one caught my attention. Because that old, old church, I could see from the outside, had some modern additions to it. Well, can we just walk out here and then for a walk from here downtown? Oh, no problem. So we checked out with our card, Walked in there, and wouldn't you know it, I walked right into that church on a Thursday morning. Beautiful, absolutely good, gorgeous. 11th century, used to be a monastery. My little Dutch could tell me that when I looked at the guide. And then it used to be a school for boys. Now, not anymore. Now this old church, waiting all the way back to the 11th century, is repurposed. Now it is used, the sanctuary, you can still have ceremonies in there, but the other spaces is used as a restaurant, as a hotel, as a bar, and people gather, and people have fun, because that, you see right there, you see the old, old thing and the stained glass window, and underneath there, tables and chairs. We put, I love it that this church is not torn down, and now that people can and have fun there, but it's not a church anymore in that sense that people gather, we do every Sunday morning. And I know you don't have to go to Eindhoven. Even here in Columbus on Broad Street, there's a church like that, which is now a concert hall. And weddings take place right like that. I just love the different architecture styles mixed together. However, this is not about different architectures. So we went on, Anna and I, on our little tour in Eindhoven, had a cup of coffee in an outside cafe. And I thought, like, there's this huge church on the marketplace. The one with the big spires. We haven't been in there. Should we just go in there and check it out? Oh, sure, she said. So my dear beloved daughter and I went to this beautiful old church, St. Catherine's Church, St. Katharina Kirk. And we walked in Thursday afternoon, 1.30. And while I was in there, just being taken by the architecture, and by the beautiful, beautiful rosettes and stained glass windows, I heard this voice. Did you just get goosebumps? I did. And a little bit later, while I was still taking it all in with all the goosebumps on me, switching from the tourist mode into the worship mode, 
I heard other voices. I couldn't really figure it out because after all, with all everybody from the Netherlands, everybody speaks Dutch. But the cadence reminded me of something which was really familiar. And I heard on the father in the Hermelin side, Uf naam worde geheiligd, uf koning wat kamme, uf wel geschiede, gelijk in the Hermel also op die aarde. Our Father, the Lord's Prayer in a different language, on a Thursday afternoon, 12.30, in a church which is so, so old, and goosebumps again all over me. I do not know if you've ever had that experience. You go somewhere with a totally different mindset, and then you experience God moments, and they just change you for pain. Afterwards, we just walked out. I'm thinking, what just happened here? Only to realize on one of the flyers that every Thursday at 12.15, they have a prayer. How would I know? I just have to walk in there. That moment when God speaks different languages and can touch you. However, here now, we celebrate the Pentecost at Westerville Community United Church of Christ. And I wonder, how does God move us speaking all one language? How does God move us to go forward? How do we have these experiences which I cannot really describe in stats and in facts, but I know God is there? Those goosebumps moments where you just know from the top of your head to the bottom of your feet, God just moves you, and there is no way of describing in words because our human language is so limited. We just completed our program year, Community United Church of Christ. So time to evaluate what went wrong, what could be done better, how do we experience God in this church last year. And while I was reflecting about the different ways, we have done things differently. For example, confirmation class was in the afternoon on a Sunday, once a month, instead of in the morning. We offered percolating with the pastors, getting to know each other every second month. Not only three or four times a year, maybe two, twice a year. We welcome new member every second month. And if you look at the statistics, for those of you who like numbers, 11 confirmants, 8th and ninth graders, 32 new people joined since last August. 32 new people. We can just say, please, please join us in this ever-widening circle of Christ's love. How many cards were written? I do not know. How many phone calls were made? I do not know. How many visits were made? I do not know. How many meals were shared? I have no clue, but I know it's quite a lot. So many times. And also, we adopted, we made friends with a family from Afghanistan. And now there's even a car waiting for them in the parking lot. Because God moves us. God moves you. How does the Spirit work? God moves in you and through you, and God is just amazing. And every time, every day when there's a new opportunity, I'm inviting you to think about how is God at work? How is God moving us beyond our limitations to think about something which could be possible? Last year at this time, we had no idea how this is ever going to work to reconfigure out the whole Sunday morning. And bell choir now, every single Sunday, 8.15, you are ringing the bells. Some people stay here for three, four, five hours in, in the, every Sunday. And then they stay for a meeting afterwards or for the percolating of the pastors or the, because they're mentors. And then in the evening, two or three hours later, then there's youth group. So literally from 8 a.m. in the morning till after 7 p.m. People are in this building. But not just here in this building. 
outside as well. I'm so tickled that we have new t-shirts and then go into the Pride Parade in Columbus in a few weeks. Wonderful, and that some of us will be present here at the festival when Pride Festival is a little bit different last than in the past. Not only inside, but outside and in the world as well. Because I know that we have people internationally watching us online. Thank you so much, whoever manages the AV loft over there. <laughs> Thank you, because, because of you, people outside this building can be and worship and participate with us, regardless of which state or number plate you are driving. Spirit is at work in you and through you. And this is how God is at work. And this is how we can be together, not only on Sundays, but during the week at all. And for me, that's how I can celebrate the cost, regardless of the language we speak, regardless of the background we, can, we have, we can all, all share part of God's love. Just as Jelaine was singing, I'm right here. God, fill me, mold me, use me, and send me out to be one of God's messengers of love and peace and grace. Amen. I suspect some of you have had a God moment or two where an encounter with another person suddenly gives you goosebumps and makes you think differently about your place in the world and what God is calling you to do. It wasn't too long ago I was talking with a family of this congregation, and they, it was actually shortly after the initial invasion in Ukraine, and we were all feeling um, all the things. We were feeling all the things, weren't we? And I was talking with this family. Their daughter said to me that for allowance each week, she has three jars, and she puts some of her money into her save jar, and some of her money into her spending jar, and some of her money into her donation jar. And she wasn't going to be in this church the day that we took up a collection to help those who were in Ukraine, but she was going to her grandmother's church that Sunday where they were doing the very same thing. And she said, I am going to take all of my donation money, that whole jar, and I'm bringing it to my grandma's church because I'm going to help the people in Ukraine. And I thought to myself, wow, sadness can move us to do a lot of things, but love moves us to do so much more. And it was from the love of her own heart that she felt the spirit calling her to give what she had, which I promise you was, was more than any amount of change could amount to. So during this time of offering, I invite you to think about all the ways that the Spirit is moving you to give from a place of love. So that when you have those goosebump moments in conversations with other people, you too are open to how the Spirit is calling you to provide for people in this world. And know that it can start right here in this congregation. So together, we can pull our saving jar and our spending jar and our donation jar together and do so much good in this work, in this world, because that is exactly what the Spirit is calling us to do. I invite you to give as you are able.
May you move through us like wind and fire this day and every day that we might continue to give to this world in a way that allows us to partner with you in caring for your people. We ask you to bless these gifts and the givers. Amen. You may be seated. We are doing, uh, we are now going into the transition time for Holy Communion and our <clears throat> song for this will be Let Us T Talents and Tongues Employ. I would like just to first give you a little bit of an idea that we ask you if you would like to come forward to receive communion. We will have two lines gluten free in the middle. The two pastors will be handing out the bread and then cups will be, the juice also will be handed out. For those of you who prefer not to come up, we have ushers also will be communion to you. We will all be masked and taking all the sanitary precautions which we can think of. And there are little baskets on the sides in which you can then dispose of your little communion cup. Now, let us enter into the spirit of Holy Communion. It is time for us to gather at this table, and we remember that whether we come to this table and we speak a language of despair on this day, or maybe you come to this table and you speak a language of heartache on this day, perhaps you're arriving at this table and the language on your tongue is one of joy and excitement. Whatever language you hold in your heart, whatever language pours from your lips, it is welcome here. You are welcome here, exactly as you are. At this church, we practice an open table. All are invited to participate in the love and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. And we remember together that he gathered here on the night that he was betrayed by his disciples. And at first he took the bread and he blessed it and he broke it. And he offered this to his disciples and he said, this is my body broken for you. Every time you eat of this bread, do so in memory of me, for this is the bread of life. And in like fashion, after supper, Jesus took the cup and he blessed it. And he offered this to his disciples and he said, this is the cup of the new covenant. Every time you drink of this, do so in remembrance of me. Take and drink, all of you. Let us pray. We pray to you, O God, who hovered over creation, 
and brought order out of formless lists and led the people through the wilderness into freedom. We pray to you who spoke to the prophets and the people throughout the ages, and we celebrate that your spirit filled Jesus with power and wisdom, and through him made the life of God available to all. We rejoice that the Spirit of God has been poured out on all people of all ages and all races. And we trust that the Holy Spirit is amongst us when we try to follow in Christ's way, moving forward, and that God's Spirit unites us despite our differences. Gracious God, we ask you to bless the bread and the cup and all of us who are going to receive it with the outpouring of your Holy Spirit so that we can be ambassadors of your love for all people in the world. And as God's children, let us pray the prayer with God taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. This is the table of God for the people of God. Come, everything is ready.
surfed. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> Thank you. Let us rise in preparing for our closing hymn. be over, but the service of the world, you are correct, continues with all the clap and all the applause we can have. Let us go out as people of God, filled with the Holy Spirit, and to have those visions only God can have for us. As a reminder, after the benedictions, we would help, like to have those who are able to carry a chair or two out, and Tina Baldorf uh, is right here, right there, the person who's waving can tell her exactly where those chairs go. It is our tradition at West of a Community United Church of Christ that after the spoken benedictions, we hold hands or, and we reach out to our neighbors to share the ever-widening circle of Christ's love. If you are not comfortable reaching or touching somebody else's hand, just keep the hand next to you, and we know that God can connect us in all the many ways we cannot even yet imagine. And now go into the world and know that the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forevermore. Amen. <laughs>